Hello there, I thought I would do a uh, um, a narrated art experience for you today. So what I've got here is um, a sped up process video I suppose and I'll just be doing um, you know a general explanation of what I'm doing. I won't be too specific since it's in 400% speed so um, we'll uh, keep it sort of brief. What I'm doing right now is just sketching it obviously. It's on um, a bit of A4 paper size. Um, so that's A4 cartridge paper <coughs> is what I pretty much would draw on in, in real life. So it's a size I like to use and I'm just sketching with a standard chalk brush. Chalk brush? Because um, I like it. I like the square profile and I think it's nice to draw with. Um, I'm keeping the sketch pretty loose because I don't know, sometimes it's more fun to be freeform, it's a little bit more spontaneous I guess. You can be a lot more structured in your approach, but I don't like doing that because, um, I don't know, it, 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 it's a bit more like soulless I guess, if you want to put it that way. Um, and I don't know, you can get better results that way, but so like if it's something I'm not really familiar with, maybe some subject matter that's not really comfortable, I'll, I'll use that approach. But um, for something like this, which is to say an ugly science fiction man um, in a portrait, that's quite easy. So I'll just freeform it pretty much. That's a, something that maybe is a little harder without confidence, but um, the more you do it, the more confident you'll get. So yeah. If you, um, if you do put in the time to make it a little bit more structured, you can get a better result. You can get like a more, um, um, uh, what would you say, like dimensionally correct result. So like all your fucking things will come together and look a little bit more realistic maybe. You'll have less per uh, perspective errors and things like that. But um, I just, I can't be asked with it today or yesterday when I did that. So um, I'm doing it this way and it's fine. Um, I'm just adding some more fucking details and shit like that. I wouldn't get too um, carried away with it because um, you can like add more later on, paint over it. And now I've added a new layer and that's it to multiply so um, it'll like cover the, um, this, the layer below. It'll like preserve it, it'll like just add color to it I suppose. Um, and I'm choosing a color scheme that's like triadic. So um, you've got like your color wheel and it's like three triangular points on that color wheel. Um, and the one I'm going for is like, um, you know, Donatello from the Ninja Turtles. So we've got like purple, green and um, like yellow or orange, I suppose. So um, yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be bright or anything like that. You can just, as long as you stick to it approximately. And um, yeah, just laying down the basic colors. I've added a new layer and I'm doing like ambient occlusion. It's a new multiply, multiply layer though. Um, and I'm just using like gray to just add pretty much AO in the, um, I don't know, just trying to darken some areas really. I had a basic impression of shadow. Um, and now I've made a new layer again, another multiply layer, if you'd believe it. And I'm just adding some more like hard shadows I suppose. I'm just thinking like where the light would be shining from. In this case it's like pretty much directly above him. Maybe a little bit to the front. Um, and yeah just places where it would be dark in the eye sockets. Eye sockets! Um, under the nose, in the mouth, all that kind of stuff. Under his neck. I'm just adding a little bit of three dimensionality third dimension depth to him um, and yeah just uh, better color those pipes in you need your pipes colored otherwise what are you doing all right new layer um, this is a normal layer and I'm 
highlighting by selecting the color and raising the value, which is to say the brightness, and I'm also making the color cooler. I'm using a color space known as LAB. Um, most documents will be in RGB, and that's the standard like web format, I think. Um, LAB is a little bit different because instead of having you know the amount of red, the amount of green, the amount of blue, it has the value, the L, meaning lightness, the A, meaning, uh, I don't know, the color, ranging from um, teal to magenta, and the B, meaning uh, warmth, so cooler or warmer. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that skin color, I'm raising the L channel, and I'm lowering the B channel so it's cooler and lighter. Um, I just like using the color space, there's no reason to do that. The colors blend a bit differently, it's up to you. I'd feel like um, it's best to just use RGB until you've done some experimenting. Well, do, do what you want. And that's basically what I'm doing for this whole thing. Um, just picking those colors and um, just lightening up most, you know, sunlit areas or whatever light source. Just um, making him a little bit brighter, a little bit... It's still quite a flat image, so we'll uh, get to it. And now I've made a new layer again, and I'm blending um, just a little bit. I think I'm using a soft brush, maybe? I can't really tell. Premiere has given me like a smaller window to look at, so I can't really see fine text and brush shapes and stuff, but I get a basic impression of what I'm doing. I'm just blending the colors, so I'm just taking the sketch color and I'm blending it with the surrounding colors a little bit just to smooth it and give it a little bit more um, dimension. Not getting too carried away. A little bit carried away, but not too much. And this, uh, you know, the, the upper lip, you know, that should be uh, falling off to a dark color around the teeth because then I won't be touching and um, raising the areas of these scars around his face. I've just made them a little bit redder, a little bit pinker, as scar tissue sometimes is. I think he's pretty cute. He's a cute boy. Alright, now I'm doing the teeth. Same process really. I've um, made it warmer though, just because I want the teeth to be a little bit yellower. Oh, I don't want to match his skin colour or anything like that. Um, we'll we'll uh, get back to these later, but I think I'll leave them here for a while. <coughs> Excuse my voice, it's terrible. My voice is terrible. <laughs> it cracks and stuff all the time. It's so embarrassing. I'm just um, refining the shapes a little bit more. I think he's got a bit of a an underbite there, but that's okay. He's he's body positive. He's come to terms with his um. He's he, he doesn't care what people think. Even if he probably can't talk very well, it doesn't matter. He's a thug. I think he's a thug. I'm just darkening again. I'm getting a the dark colour I've used in the eye socket there, the, the missing eye, I'm just using that to shade. Um, just some areas a little bit darker, even more, just to make it pop a little more. Yeah, it's you, You're really going to push your values a little bit, so otherwise um, the image will look very flat. And I see that's the thing that a lot of new digital artists do, is that they don't push the values hard enough. I guess they're a little bit like, I don't know, timid. Um, which is totally understandable because it's easy to fuck up, but um, just, you know, try it. Just experiment. Otherwise, yeah, you, you get too much flatness, like, you get a limited range of values, like, too grey, I suppose. Washed out looking, you know what I mean? I don't know what I'm doing. I've stopped. Okay, I'm back. I'm doing it still. Alright. Just more shading on the scar there. I don't want it to look too pink or like 
like stuck on. It looks a little stuck on underneath the cheek there, but I think I fix that a bit later. Maybe, maybe I don't. I can't remember. I can't remember what the final picture looks like. I only finished it a little while ago. Got to have the uh, the old Thanos chin. Still just pushing the valleys a little bit further along, adding a little bit more dimension to things like the nose there. Looks a bit more like a cute little button nose now. It's pretty cute. Just making sure my laser's still there. Alright, they're still there, cool. Alright, no worries. Um, yeah, just making the teeth a little bit darker around there. A bit more filthy looking, you know what I mean? Okay, now I'm doing the skin again. I guess I jump around a lot, hey. Make the gums a little bit pinker, because gums are pink. You can um, verify that by looking in the mirror. Unless you've got like, gum disease or something, I don't know. Still adding a little bit more detail. I'm trying to imagine all the um, shapes on the face, like um, each one. <laughs> like, it seems like intuitive, but each one picks up light and has like, if it's a bump, you know, the light falls on the top and the shadow sits on the bottom, I suppose. So, um, you get those like nice sharp transitions between the shapes, which I think look pretty nice. If that makes sense at all, probably not. I think you just gotta practice. Just give it a go. Give it a go, mate. Alright, so make it a little brighter again. I've chosen another colour, brighten it again, same thing. Lightening it, make it a little colder. And, um. I can't remember what I'm doing there. In the neck, that's weird. That's weird. Basically, I don't want too much of that sketch showing. Just just a little bit, you know, maybe in the shadows, but I want to blend it. I don't want to see those, like, um, brush lines sticking up and doing all that kind of stuff. I want them to fuck off. Alright, so I'm brightening it again, and um, we should make it pop a little bit more, just picking up kind of the parts where I think the highest points pretty much. And um, yeah, just blending it downwards so that um, it kind of turns into a shadow at the bottom, but the top is kind of nice, sharp and bright, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, it'll make it like stick out a bit more, a little bit more three-dimensional, that's the whole thing here. You really gotta try and imagine this in a three-dimensional space, which is pretty much all there is to. It's the okay. There's more to it than that, but there's more to. Fuck. What am I saying? Shit. Okay. A big component of digital painting is spatial awareness or reasoning or whatever you call it. So you really want to be able to visualize your subject in a three-dimensional kind of form um, and just. Imagine the light falling on it. It's kind of like, uh, kind of feels like sculpting or something like that. I don't know. It's weird. You just have to practice, and you'll like come to grips with it. I think you start to understand if you don't already. Not to patronise you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But um, yeah, it's it's nice. It feels like um, 
like forming something out of like the pixels I guess it's like forming a shape it's nice it's a nice feeling it's quite relaxing oh uh, yeah just picking up the high points still just on these little creases I don't want to lighten up too much because I want the mouth to be a little bit darker like the lower half of the face I want it to look a bit darker than the um than the forehead where it's gonna be quite bright so um you really just want to pick up the highest points on the on the lower parts I'm doing shadows now, that's cool, that's a nice development. I like to zoom out a lot. You see that I zoom out a lot and I flip the canvas a lot. And um, I flipped the canvas, I might have already talked about this or it might have been in one of the earlier takes. Earlier takes that I did of this. And, um, in case I didn't already explain it, I'll just explain it again because I can't be bothered pausing the recording and going back, but I just flip it so that I can see errors stick out if they do. Like if um, something looks fucked up and wrong, um, I'll see it with like refreshed eyes. Like as if I was a different person seeing the art for the first time. First time! And I see um, I see those little, um, little inconsistencies and perspective errors and stuff like that. It gets less important later on in the painting once you're just rendering, but when you're sketching and all that sort of stuff, establishing the proportions and the dimensions of the image is quite important. And um, I zoom out a lot because I just like to get a sense of the whole image and how it looks compositionally and how I might look at a glance, I suppose. It's easy to get kind of caught up in, um, in the close-ups of it all, but it's important to just see how it looks as a... Um, at a glance, you know, from the from a fucking far away point of view. What did he do to get his head to look like this? I think he's a mutant. I think that's my explanation. Is that he's uh he's not normal. I don't think normal people have this. Although there's some people that have those weird brain heads, you know what I mean? Like the like wrinkly scalp skin, but um I don't think he's like that because he's got other shit going on too, so I oh, like what's up with his ear, I don't know. Is it small? It doesn't really look anatomically correct, but it looks fine, so it must just be like some congenital defect, so he's probably a mutant. I like the idea of mutants. I don't want mutants to exist, but in a, in a hypothetical sort of fantasy scenario, I think they're kind of cool. Because you've always got to have people below, you know what I mean? You've got to have underclasses. <laughs> so, and they're mutants, right? I don't want to be racist to mutants if there's any watching this. You can see here, it's, it's becoming a little bit more apparent that I'm, um, again, following that principle of highlighting the top and letting it fall off to a shadow at the bottom. Um, it's quite nice. You could do some, like, even if you just drew, like, fuck, I don't know. Imagine a leather couch with a, like, padded, um, back or something like that. Um, you could, as a practice, just draw something like that and then practice shading it in using the same technique. And I think that would be a pretty good exercise. But that's basically what I'm imagining when I do this sort of thing. That kind of texture. I'm sliding too far down my chair. I feel like there's not really a lot to say here. There's not a lot to be said. I'm just doing rendering. 
it's it's like the same shit now pretty much from here till the end the end which is fucking oh we're about halfway there fucking thank god but yeah just um push in the highlights that's all there is to it adding a little bit more um little extra shapes like some of these shapes I've created during the rendering process and they're not part of the sketch but that's okay the sketch isn't everything unless you want to be doing line work or something like that which is cool because line work can be nice if you do line work you can really define everything painting would be quite easy if you do line work but um I don't know line work is not that fun to do for me it feels a bit like it's a bit boring and not freeform enough. It's like I'm just tracing over a sketch. And um, there's not much thinking involved, which is nice. The sketch and the rendering, there's more thinking. But um, line work is so boring. I don't know how people do it so much. But, you know, people do what they're comfortable with. Oh, fuck me, I'm tired. I'm not as tired as I was the other day. I was trying to record a, uh, a live drawing. I couldn't, I hadn't slept all night, and so I was like, I couldn't fucking do anything, I was so useless, I couldn't do it, so, um, I discarded those drawings, and, um, so I've decided to do this one, do a time lapse and just annotate it with my own, um, banal comments, like, you know, really spice it up a bit. I felt like you needed that extra tooth. It's really good, really important. You can see the face is starting to pop a little bit more now. Looks a bit better. A little bit more um, striking. More highlights, yet more highlights. Just highlighting the scars now. Whoops. Okay. Making them nice and shiny. You want to make them a little shiny because, um, I don't know, scar tissue tends to be a little bit shiny for some reason. A little bit, a little bit, uh, satiny. I think it sticks out a little bit too much down the bottom still, but that's okay. I can't remember if I fix it. I can't remember if I ever actually fix it. Oh, fuck me. Alright. Make the teeth pop a little bit more. A little bit. Um. A little bit lighter. I think they look a little bit fucking too bright in the final thing, but <clears throat> it's okay. I don't want to spend too much time on them. I think I'm zoomed in a little bit too much as well. Ugh. The reason you want to stay kind of zoomed out, uh, and you do, is because um, it's easy to get caught up in details. And it's easy to make... Um, uh, it's easy to make um, <clears throat> like the mistake of going too close and rendering something down to the fucking finest pixel fine details and making it all so precise and lovingly rendered and then you zoom out and you've got like that area way more high detail than everything else and I mean you could go around and um, then render everything to that level which is totally fine but you're probably not going to do that you want to work out a little bit more i mean you might um you know zoom out a little bit more and um keep the details a little bit looser you might want to refine them a little bit later you know you might want to go in and refine them but in general you don't want to 
get too caught up in making things high detail, especially early on in the drawing, in the rendering process. So just try and keep zoomed out a little bit and um, avoid using minuscule brushes until later on in the um, later on in the process because pretty much once you set a level of detail you're committed to it you know otherwise it'll look like shit when it's done so I've gone a little bit hard on this one but um, maybe not too bad Shine your teeth, that's what you want. Get yourself a man who cleans his teeth at least once a day, at least once a week. Better do that eyeball, near the eyeball. I think I was a little bit lazy on this. <clears throat> I think it could have been done a little bit better, but um, it's all right for what it is. I would have liked to have made a more detailed prosthetic or something, but I didn't. I just wanted a glowing eyeball, you know. Some vague semblance of surgery or something like that in the iris. I get too carried away because no one's going to give a shit when they see it. No one's going to notice. Some more basic details around the eye. I think I made the uh, eyelid, uh, the ravaged eyelid, look a little bit too um, 3D, a little bit too far out. I mean, not quite as uh, set in the eye socket, but I guess I've made my decision on it. So I'm. Um, doing the armor now. I only did this a few hours ago and I'm doing the same thing as just lightening the uh, base color and making it a little cooler so I've got warm shadows and cool highlights pretty much. Um, as you can see it looks pretty uneven. I'll tidy that up in a little bit. But that's because my sketch was rough and I didn't make the uh, proportions very accurate. So when I flip it I can tell. I don't think I ever made it perfect, but I think the whole armor looks a little bit skewed. I wanted it to be a little bit more side on than that. But um anyway, it is what it is. It's set how it is. I'm not gonna fix it now. It's done. I need to um, expand my visual library of um, science fiction armor parts. I'm not very, I, I'm very generic. I have a very generic take to um, designing that kind of stuff, and I think I could do a lot better. But um, I just my visual library is limited, and I don't use many references when I do things like this. So um, I've got to work with tubes, tubes, and bolts and uh, panels and cushions like I'm doing right now and um, fucking vents and stuff like that because it's just what I think about when I, c when I come to design the thing oh god gotta be awesome to finish with puberty I'm 27 years old you know it should be done by now I'm using that purple color for the um, shading on the metal. The metal is, uh, I think it's just gray. I can't remember. I wasn't paying attention when I selected it. Uh, so it might be gray or like dark, dark, desaturated purple. But um, I'm just using that purple as the black. Oh. I don't know how accurate this is. I don't think it looks very accurate. Not very realistic, I mean. But that's all right. 
doesn't have to be. You know, he kind of looks like that guy from Star Wars, off the um, desert skiff or whatever. Um, what was his name? Weak Way or something? What was that his race? I don't know what his name was. I don't know. The fucking ship guard guy when they were putting um, Luke Skywalker into the Sarlacc pit and he had the stick or gun or something like that. I haven't seen Return of the Jedi for a while so I can't really remember. But something like that. He looks like that. He looks like that guy. Weak way. I think that was it. Star Wars is terrible now. I'm so not interested in it. Which is a shame because I used to love it. I used to love the old movies. I even liked the prequels, man. Like, I even thought they were okay compared to that new shit. I couldn't stand, um, what was that fucking first one, Force Awakens? I hated it. It was total shit. <laughs> um, it was total shit. And then, like, I watched Rogue One, that was a little bit better, I kind of liked it, but just because it had really cool Darth Vader scenes in it, and um, and it was set during the Galactic, Galactic Civil War, yeah I really like the Galactic Civil War, it's really cool, but it was still a bit shit, and I haven't even bothered to see the ones after that, what fucking, what is there, like, Han Solo, the Han Solo movie, and um, uh, what's the one after that? The Force Awakens and then like... I can't remember. I can't even remember what it's called. But I'm not, I'm not interested. But that's okay. I don't have to be. I don't have to endorse them with my money. I can just let other people do that for me. Just had panels, panels and fucking triangles, and um, just to spice up the design a little bit more. Um, it's not really very much, but it just breaks it up a little bit, makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. Most most of the viewers will be drawn to the face of the character because that's where most of the detail and contrast is. But you can't just leave things like the armor alone. They have you have to put a little bit in. You know, it's just really just a um, auxiliary element of the image, but you can't completely neglect it. But we're approaching the end, which is cool. Now I'm adding a gradient map, and they're really cool because, I, honestly, I put them on a lot of my artworks. Um, just because they, you can make your own, I just used a preset one, um, like red, yellow, and blue, because I think it's a cool scheme. Um, you've really got to be careful with them because they can, um, overpower the color scheme. So I would like to turn down the opacity, and I've also added a contrast adjustment layer as well. So these are adjustment layers, and they're on that little button on the bottom of the layer panel, which is like a little circle, it's half black and half white. Um, you can select all of them from there, and um, yeah, the, the gradient map's really cool. I, I guess I've turned it off for now. I'll, I'll turn it back on a bit later, but um, I'm still rendering, but I couldn't help but to give it a go. But they unify the colors a little bit more and make it a little bit more interesting looking. I always prefer, um, I, I never really like green and yellowy kind of color schemes. I always hate them. They look so ugly to me, and so like, boring. So, um, I often put something like that over it to make it a little bit cooler. Um, just be careful not to turn it up too high. Such a good song. It's, uh, Le, Le Perve by, um, Carpenter. I don't know how to say it. Carpenter. Up into brute, but I don't know. It's slowed down to like 60% or something like that. <laughs> it's a good song. So, really, I'm just polishing it up now. The face is pretty much done. Um, I'm just 
making a few more little edits on the armor. There we go, some holes. You know, you need ventilation for whatever that thing is. I don't know what it is. And you need those little bits too that screw on. And the bolts and the vents. Like I told you, I do bolts, vents, and panels. And padding. And just a little cool highlight just to make it pop a little more, a little, a little bit more uh, metallic. Now I've added a multiply layer and I think I'm just adding a little bit of extra shadow, just faint. I think I'm using a soft brush and I'm just adding it in some parts just to make it a little darker. Man, I hope I got rid of that at the end product. I think I did. I think I did. I hope I did. I got this horrible feeling I didn't, but that's okay. I don't really care. I'm not that emotionally invested, but I would like it to be better than, better than that. Yeah, pretty much just pushing those valleys a little bit more. And that's also what that contrast um, adjustment layer will do. It'll just make... Um, it'll just make it a little bit... A little bit more... You know, contrasting. But, um... Yeah. I think I'm just going for some very final, very bright highlights just to... Just as a final touch. It's pretty much done at this stage. Yeah, just gotta make it a little little bit more a little bit more contrasting. Gotta get that little ear and his neck. The neck's been neglected. And uh what left to do? I think some scratches on the armor. There we go. Because I don't know, he's he looks like a thug, and everyone knows that thugs are people who have damaged armor. They're not people who wear pristine gear, because it's never new. That you must have got it second hand, or you know, because he's a mutant, he's poor. He would never buy anything new. He'd have to inherit it. He'd probably a hand me down from his cousin, and it's way too big. His cousin's an even bigger mutant uglier too I'm sure and now I'm just cleaning up the little fucking extra bits yeah I didn't get rid of those shadows I'm just cleaning up the line work but the shadows I put on before looks like I didn't actually clean them up properly but that's okay I don't care that much And uh, I think that's it. That's pretty much him. Yeah, that's him. Look left, look to right. All good, all done. So, um, thanks for watching this if you managed to slog your way all the way through it. And, um, I'm sure I'll make another video like this later on, but I can't be fucked right now, so, <laughs> it'll wait a few days. Anyway, see ya.